So I'm going to, I have a number of slides, but I'm going to kind of go through them quite quickly so we can get to the real meat of the session, hearing from uh, actual <laughs> projects and networks. So I'm going to be quick, but it's really a great opportunity to introduce myself, a little bit about the work of the desk, and hopefully kind of we can kind of follow up with discussions and contact after. So the Creative Europe Desk Ireland Culture Office is part of a network of three offices here in Ireland. Uh, there are two offices, uh, which we call the media offices, who cover film and television, and the culture office covers all other arts and cultural sectors. So we are uh, grant funded by the European Commission as a national uh, contact point to uh, provide information and advice to the Irish sector here, both artists and organizations and also to promote the program at events like this. So here we have uh, the program in question, Creative Europe. I'm sure many of you are familiar with it. One of the silver linings of COVID is COVID hit just as the budget was being debated in the parliament and the EU really recognized how vulnerable the creative and cultural sectors were to COVID and how hard they were hit. So we ended up having a much bigger budget than was additionally proposed, which is fantastic. So as everyone knows here, uh, like any of your funders, uh, there's a kind of a broader objective at play that you will have to be able to speak to. So European funding is another tool for the EU to realize their kind of uh, social and political aims. So I'm just going to quickly look at some of the culture priorities. So a lot of the funding I talk about is really kind of institutional funding for organizations, you know, with a certain level of capacity. But artists and the cultural sector, you know, you're really very important to the EU. So you can see here, uh, these culture priorities will cover all of the EU's funding for culture for seven years. And I've just highlighted the capacity building of artists because that really relates to a lot of what we're talking about today. Um, so, um, you know, it's important to remember that the EU want to ensure that those people that want to kind of have careers within the arts and cultural sector are enabled and supported to do so. That is part of their agenda and that's really the overarching framework of what we're talking about today. So just very quickly, these are the main uh, funding strands of Creative Europe for the cultural sector. Very exciting this uh, round is we have uh, Culture Moves Europe for this program. So that is an individual mobility strand uh, for artists and also for host organizations for residencies. European Cooperation Projects is the main project funding strand of the EU. And then we have European Networks of Cultural and Creative Organizations, European Platforms for the Promotion of Emerging Artists and the Circulation of European Literary Works. Today is not the format, I guess, to go in depth. But for each of these calls, we, um, the culture office will always do an information session and an application workshop and work one-on-one -on -one with people. So if you see these calls come up and you're linked into our channels, you know, come along to hear about them. But also if you have a project idea and you're not sure where it could fit here, just get, uh, get in touch with us. So uh, the cooperation project strand, um, is the main funding strand. It's in general about 80% of the overall budget for culture goes to this program. So there's a couple of uh, novelties, as they say, about this uh, strand this time, which has actually made it much more attractive and I would say accessible to the Irish or to the EU kind of arts and culture sector. So the main one is that the EU has raised the co-funding they are raise the amount of funding they'll put into a project. So before you used to have to, for the kind of smaller scale, you would have to raise 40% uh, of your budget. Now you have to raise 20%. So the timing is very good. This call will open in the next few weeks and we'll be doing our first session in mid-October. Um, we do them online. They're usually, uh, you know, kind of under two hours. So come along and just, just hear about it then. Culture Moves Europe, I'm sure some of you have already engaged with this or thought about this. So this is an individual artist's mobility strand. So this is the first time in my tenure that the EU has funding open to individual artists. So it's fantastic. We've engaged very strongly with it. Um, and it's a very light touch award. So 
it's something that's easy to make an application. I guess the difficult part is, you know, you, you have to establish a, you know, a kind of a, a contact or a network in a European country that you might want to travel to, but the process of applying is very easy. So again, this should open the end of October and we will do, um, we will do a session on that. So I'd urge any of you interested, because I guess the core, if you're thinking strategically, so if, if you want to develop your, your practice as an artist or your work as an organization on an international or European level, this is a really good tool to use because it can be used for kind of testing partnerships or kind of models. Some people do, you know, kind of a mini residency or, or kind of a tour. You know, they, it's very flexible what you can do and it's a very kind of low risk way to do it. So it's definitely something if you want to develop your work in that area, this can be a good starting point. Design and Crafts Council in Kilkenny, so that's really exciting. Um, the kind of aim of the networks is to strengthen the cultural and creative sectors. So what you'll see with the EU increasingly is they're trying to adapt a kind of a targeted sectoral approach. So they're kind of recognizing that the issues facing the performing arts sector are different from the music sector. So you'll start to see, you know, kind of tailored funding. So we have the Music Moves Europe, I mentioned to a few people the Perform Europe Fund that's cur like currently going to open for the performing arts sector. And all of that work comes through its consultation with the European networks. So um, they can become you know, a, a kind of a platform for the sectors in Europe to feed up to the EU. The, crucially, the European net networks will offer training and development opportunities for uh, the cultural and creative sectors. And they can obviously, the main thing is provide a kind of a, a platform to exchange ideas and network with your peers across Europe. So why join a European network? Um, I think obviously we're going to hear some thoughts on that after, but one of the things that we often say is obviously I've done this job for a really long time. And what a lot of people say is it's often through kind of joining a European network or attending a European network event that the seed of a cooperation project or a transnational project is planted because it's a good uh, opportunity to kind of, as my slide says, co-create, learn from each other, share information and develop new ideas. It can directly lead to partnerships and projects, not necessarily only uh, within uh, the Creative Europe framework, but just in general. Um, and again, it kind of can provide an opportunity. If you, if you think about kind of some of the barriers or issues affecting a sector here is often shared with your peers in Europe. So by coming together within a formalized network, you can create a very you know, powerful voice, I guess, at EU level. So just a brief overview. So to date, we're about midway through the current program and we have already surpassed, I guess, our results in the seven years of the last program. So the sectors here are kind of reaching a critical mass of wanting to and, and kind of endeavoring to engage in European projects and engage with EU funding. So at the moment, we have 41 Irish organizations involved in 40 Creative Europe projects. The majority would be through uh, support for European cooperation projects, but we also have some are members of European platforms. Um, and this translates to direct grants to Ireland of over 6.1 million, so which is fantastic. Um, and then you see here we have over 100 members currently of European networks. So just briefly um, talking about some of the next steps of if you're at the very start of your journey, so the first thing is, do you want to do this? So I always say to people, you know, you're not, I would never say, you know, EU funding is not for everyone. Um, but I would say if you are engaged in any kind of long-term planning or even medium-term planning, a lot of Arts Council funded organizations have 
developed kind of strategies kind of coming out of the capacity building award or for their long-term planning I think it's something to kind of consider and you know make yourself aware of um, look at the capacity of your organization or you as an individual to undertake this because it does involve it does involve work it is it is like I always say the easy way and the hard way if this is the type of work your organization wants to do anyway it can be fantastic if you're trying to add it on to an already you know overstretched organization in terms of what you're delivering for your national projects it can be difficult um, looking I think um, I didn't go into it today but obviously a lot of the policy priorities of the EU are aligning very strongly with national funders here thinking specifically about kind of climate I'm thinking about EDI so looking at your ideas and your work and saying does this align with what we're already doing and does that align with Creative Europe um, talk with your national partners because obviously you know you're in a constant dialogue with them develop your you know national partnership first because that can increase your your capacity to take part in something bigger at EU level um, and then really just research existing networks which is why we're here today and look at successful projects and see if there's any contacts you want to make through that so I think that's me done um, I've just uh, included my contact details there um, and I think we'll probably send out the slides so you'll have those and just our calendar of events so do sign up for our newsletter we'll be starting these so the first one is cooperation projects we're doing uh, it's kind of our what would you say Aoife it's like our flagship. our flagship event for 2023 we are doing a event focused on EDI in the RHA on the 7th of November so we're really excited about that and then we'll move into culture moves Europe and the application workshop so that's me done thank you so much I hope I didn't talk too fast. Thank you.